Hi, I'm Jonathan. Hi, I'm Haley. And we are exhausted from vacation and this danged heat. So, very short intro to our wrap up for the month. Let's cut to the top. Hi guys, it's Jonathan. I'm doing another uh, lunchtime uh, wrap up video in my car. So I've got uh, three today and I'm gonna try and get through them real quick. I finished Infernal Devices by Philip Reeve, book three of the Mortal Engines series. Um, honestly, I feel like I'm kind of running out of things to say about these books because, uh, you know, if I like the earlier ones, you'll like it. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, it's definitely moved to a more dynamic world, and I like that, and he's introduced a new generation of characters, which I think is kind of daring, given that I feel like it's sort of a YA series, and uh, it's nice to see characters grow and age and change over time and so on. I World building is good, but I keep having questions along the lines of, like, what do these people eat and so on. Um, so, there's that. I, uh, but I mean, that's really kind of getting nitpicky, and I don't really think that's entirely fair to it. Uh, but I, I've definitely enjoyed it, and I'm working on the fourth one, though I've ended up, uh, slowing down a lot, just because I was really ready for a break to read something else, even though I'm still like, you know, I still enjoy it, and I'm still, uh, gonna finish the series, uh, definitely not, uh, DNFing it or anything like that, but, uh, slowing the pace. After that, I read... Rise of a D-list supervillain by Jim Bernheimer, which is the fourth book in that series. I somehow it had been out for almost a year without me realizing it, which uh, upset me <laughs> quite a bit because I, I really love that series. It's good. It's full of the snarky, sarcastic main character that really enjoy and the you know action-packed superhero uh, sequences that are just a lot of fun. Uh, my biggest complaints about it were A, it's short, which I mean all of them are, but it really left me feeling uh, the itch for more because it just didn't quite have as much uh, of the world as I might have liked. It, uh, the best parts of that are where you're getting to dwell on Cal's creative problem solving and so on, and uh, this was just, there was too much plot, I guess, and not enough just kind of hanging out and enjoying the scenery. But it was still really good, and I'm really looking forward to the next one, which I believe is supposed to be out later this year, so I'm excited about that. After that, I read Artificial Condition by Martha Wells, which is the second book in the uh, Murderbot series. <laughs> uh, I, I was just uh, nicely kind of scratched the itch that I had wanting more of uh, Rise of a D-list supervillain. Not so much because they are similar in content exactly, but there's a lot of, you know, snarky sarcasticness in the main character, and I really enjoyed that. It was another one where I really wished I had more. It is a novella, and there's supposed to be another one out in three months, I think, so that's good. Uh, but it was definitely a case of, it's felt like an episode in a larger series, which, I mean, real, like, episodic is a great way of looking at it, because it's a case of... Uh, they're, you know, they're gonna be like four novellas and they're coming out just a few months apart each. So there's that. It, uh, it was really good. I, I liked the new characters. I, I just really had no complaints and if you liked the first one, I think you'll like this one even though it is kind of different in setting. It's, uh, a little bit less, uh, misanthropic humor and a little more, uh, mystery and so on, but I, I really liked it and I would recommend it. So I'll stop from there and see what else I managed to get read this month. Next up we have Just One Damned Thing After Another by Jody Taylor and A Symphony of Echoes by Jody Taylor, uh, books one and two of the Chronicles of St. Mary's. Uh, it's about a group of time-traveling historians uh, and their madcap hijinks and uh, bouncing between disasters. Uh, it is just packed full of great characters that is definitely my favorite part of the series is the people in it, uh, and it's 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 a real roller coaster ride. It's really uh, fast paced, and there's never really any lulls in the books. 
um, there's always something happening, always something going wrong, and just stumbling from one disaster to another. Uh, it, it's a very, I, like, I don't, it's not humorous in the sense of it's not packed full of jokes or anything like that, but the characters are very snarky, sarcastic people. There's a lot of attitude, and there's a lot of humor that just flows naturally from that. Uh, it can get a little confusing at times with how densely packed the plot is and uh, the kind of like non-linear nature of events at times due to time travel and uh, the, the narrator is... Uh, I don't think it's explicitly established in the books, but you just kind of get this like unreliable narrator vibe a little bit, um, which... Uh, makes things like can be a little confusing at times but I've had a really great time reading these books and I am just devouring the series uh, I'm still steaming along with it so uh, I definitely recommend them okay I know this angle is kind of weird but I don't have a tripod and beggars can't be choosers so this is what I get um, today I am gonna do the wrap-up for the first eight books that I read in the month of May, but keep in mind that they are two series that were originally meant to be two books a piece instead of four, so they would be more like four books, not eight books, really, like lengthwise, but I'm counting all eight. The first book I read this month was Alana, The First Adventure. Um, I love this book. I've always loved it. It's kind of hard to give these accurate reviews. So all I'm going to say is it held up really better than I expected it to because I think it is the least profoundly good book in the series. So, still five stars. The second book I read this month is In the Hand of the Goddess, which is the second book in the Song of the Lioness series. It was great. It was actually a lot better than I remember it being. The like tactical parts of the book were really interesting and I really enjoyed the like I think that the climax like the the fight with the villain in this book is really 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 good. Like it has definitely stuck in my mind and I didn't realize that it had stuck in my mind so much. The third book I read this month is The Woman Who Li Rides Like a Man, third book in the Song Linus Quartet. Uh, this book is really good. Um, surprisingly racially sensitive, all things considered. Um, there are some really uncomfortable parts of this book though. It made me really, really hate one of the main characters. Like, I do not remember feeling this way about it at all when I was younger. Maybe it is just a symptom of aging. I was much more sympathetic to him at the time. But, oh my god. Ugh. Gave me a lot of feelings. Um, still really good. Maybe slightly less good than I remember it being. But still very good. Still fine. The fifth book I read this month is, surprise surprise, the final book in the Song of Lioness Quartet, Lioness Rampant. Um, this book is amazing and I love one of the characters in this book that like this is the only book he's in and I really wish that he had gotten more time. I didn't realize this book was so damaged that makes me sad. Um, I really wish that he had gotten more time on page. And I think that this book has a great, like, arc, a great sec- like, great beginning to end, like, storytelling. It really makes sense and, like, comes together nicely. But I think that because of how good the final scene is in the second book, it is hard for me to enjoy the end of the series as much because it's just not as, like, perfect. It doesn't have the same- great sense of finality that the, first, the second book it did, which makes it a little bit sad. Overall, the whole series is still a five. It's still one of the best things I've ever read. I've read them more than I've read any of the books, and even after years of not rereading them, they felt familiar and fresh at the same time. Like, Tamara Pierce, thank you. You're, you're a blessing. The, the fifth book that I read this month is 
Wild Magic, the first book in the Immortal series by Tamara Pierce. And I really enjoyed it. There was so much I don't remember about these books. I was surprised by how much I didn't remember. It was almost like reading for the first time again. It's been so long. The little things would pop up and I'd be like, oh yeah, I remember that. And this book in particular, I felt very like attached to a few random things that I remembered because of reading the uh, Tempest and Slaughter book that is a sort of prequel to these books because it is a back in time look at one of these characters when they're younger and I don't know there were just a lot of connections that I picked up on because I just read that and it made me really happy. The sixth book I read this month is Wolf Speaker by Tamara Pierce. Um, I think this, in this reread, this is the book that I have remembered the least well, at least considering how many times I've read it. For a long time, it's the only book I owned in the Immortals Quartet. Um, I had a different copy, and I really thought that there was a lot more, like, fantastical magic in this book. Like, I remembered it a lot more like that. And I, thinking about it, I also think that I was conflating parts of Julie's Wolf Pack with this book, the second book in the Julie's Wolf series. I read them near the same time when I originally read them, and I think I had somehow, like, put them in my brain together. So it was really different read. Um, also, this is the point at which I was like, I feel like New Mirror was a more prominent character in these books. But honestly, the, a lot of their, like, bonding and talking and stuff happens off page. Like, in the interim between books. So that was kind of interesting. I've just, um, at this point I've decided I'm just gonna like, give readings of the whole series at the end unless I have a, like, particular comment on a book. Um, the seventh book I read this month is Emperor Mage by Tamara Pierce, it's the third book in the Immortals Quartet, and this book is still just as perfect as I remember it being. It is by far the best book in the Immortals Quartet. It is so good. Like, the villain scenes and the animal scenes and really really unique magic scenes that like come to life in your mind like the visuals are impossible to ignore you can't not have a mind movie of it it's just so good and so funny and honestly I wish I could recommend just this book to people because I like the rest of the Immortals Quartet don't get me wrong they're really good but like this is the one I want people to read and that means I have to get them to read like two books to get to this one and that's so hard to get people to do that said I would like read this as six as I could I really love this book and the eighth book that I read this month is The Realms of the Gods by Tamara Pierce it's the finale to the Immortals Quartet um if anything I think I was even less impressed by this book than I was when I was younger. I am really uncomfortable with the age gap and the romance in this book. And, like, I almost thought that I had imagined how wide the age gap was rereading these books because Numir seems so young, but no, he is just as old as I remember him being, and it's uncomfortable. And I think that we don't get to spend enough time in an individual place in the realms of the gods. And I don't know, that just bothers me. But I can't give anything less than a five because I love the scenes with the dragons and the darkings were a brilliant bit of like magical working like and become great characters in their own right. I really love them, they were unique and I really like remember wanting one when I was a kid like that was the thing that I wanted from these books I thought they were so interesting and cute um I but also sort of disgusting also the Skinners are terrifying and I think that it was a mistake not to make them a more prominent feature in these books 
they are a terrifying monster. Like, things that creep around and absorb the life from everything around them and just the way they look. Like, people with no skin. I don't know, or all skin. I, I can't explain the way I imagined them, but it really grossed me out and terrified me just thinking about it. So, I think that I wish they would come back in the series. I don't think they're going to, though. I think it was a one and done. I don't know. This is my least favorite of the Immortals Quartet. Usually I like series finales, but I don't know why. I don't like the final books in Tamara Pierce books, at least in the first couple of series. All in all, I would still beat both these series a five, and it made me more excited to go into the next ones, which is the Kelladry of Mendelin series, The Protector of the Small, which I've just started. I did not love these books as much. They're my least favorite of the Tortall books. I've read them only once, so it's going to be like rereading them for the first time, basically. And I'm really wondering if my opinion on them would change because they are the only books that I would have rated like a four or a three instead of a five. So, fingers crossed. Okay, so I already filmed this, but I went back and listened to it, and you can't hear me because I filmed it in the car and the road noise is very loud. So I'm going to refilm my final wrap up for the month of May and I just want to say that the last book I talked about I actually finished on April the 1st but I decided I wanted to include it in the May wrap up because it was part of my rereading efforts and it really contrasts with how I felt about everything else I read so that is what it is. Um, the only books I haven't talked about are The Protector of the Small series by Tamara, Tamara Pierce. It is the Kelly Drew Mendelin books. Uh, I had much more fun rereading these than I did the one time I've read them. They, honestly, I think I didn't like it before because I was so angry about having to imagine characters that I love from previous books more complexly and maybe slightly less perfect than I imagined them before. But on my reread this time, I realized I didn't like some of those characters as much as I thought I did. So it was kind of acceptable to feel like they were being portrayed more realistically. I think I just grew up a little bit since I read them before, and I really enjoy rereading them. Kelladry is a great character. She is such a Hufflepuff, like, at heart. I'm just saying that. And I really like Neelan. He has sharp wit. And I enjoyed how much you got to see, like, the idea of knights being knights, like, on a normal day. Like, instead of, like, knights the year that the dragons came, you know? Like, they were just, like, bandits and going to tournaments and things like that. Those were the parts I enjoyed the most. That and the schooling parts, because I always enjoy books that are set in, like, training schooling settings. Um... And I enjoyed that there was more like turning towards the non-nobles and like the idea that change takes time and stuff like that. It was just interesting to read. I gave it, I think all of them five out of five stars again, and which is up. I think some of them I'd only rated threes before, so that was definitely a big change in how I felt about them. Um, the last book I read this month is my favorite trashy romance from when I was um, uh, like, just out of high school. I read it a lot, um, and it did not reread well after several years. It is super rapey, and, like, I just don't think I was that, on, that was on the radar for me. It's something to watch out for, especially, like, spousal rape, and it was so tropey, and the writing was not great, and there were parts that, like, I'm not an expert on racism, but they felt really racist like where they were like parodying like harems and slaves and things like that I didn't like it <laughs> but the parts that I remembered enjoying about the book were still really great like it was really funny and the humor is super body and like good-natured at the same time which is something that really like just makes me love things I love things that are super body or rude but they're also very like good-natured and you can't really like be mad about it those parts of the books I really enjoyed I really enjoyed some of the characters and particularly Aunt Lil is one of my favorite characters like great side character that deserved more time on the page um 
but the main romance is terrible. They're terribly characterized. They character so much of them is like it doesn't even make sense. It's just like we've described them as this one thing one time and we're not gonna like show you how they're that thing. We're just gonna describe everything they do as being that thing. But like she's a pagan. We're gonna call everything pagan. I don't know. It it was not a great reread. Um I don't know. I still gave it three stars because the humor was still like so on point for me and I really enjoyed the scenes where people got to be something other than you were expecting them to be. Like that was important to me as a young person I really enjoyed reading them and it like has influenced me a lot but like I really like the High Wayman scenes. Those are fantastic. They're really well written. They're hilarious and like there's so much like eat the rich attitude in it. Oh it's it's just great. I love it. But I, I knocked it from five down, five stars down to three and I don't regret that at all and I don't think I would recommend it to anyone. It was a different kind of rereading experience than rereading the Tortals but than reading the Tortal books was. So Hey guys, I'm doing another lunchtime reading wrap-up review. Uh, so I finished two books since my last recording. I finished A Second Chance by Jody Taylor in the Chronicles of St. Mary's a series, and also uh, A Trail Through Time by Jody Taylor, also the Chronicles of St. Mary's. Uh, so A Second Chance, I mean honestly, it's pretty much more of the same, and I mean that in the best possible way. It's uh, full of attitude and drama and just hijinks and I mean basically if you like the first two you're gonna like this one my only real significant note is that uh, it spends more time uh, in historical settings I guess is how I might put it uh, and it's just it's kind of a refreshing change and getting to see them doing more of the actual historical research that is ostensibly their purpose for existing so uh, I mean I really liked it and uh, launch straight into the next one, which is a uh, trail through time, which is very much it. It's going off the rails here, but again, in the best possible way. Uh, there are some huge twists and just change of circumstance, and I don't really want to spoil anything. But uh, big events happen, and it's uh, you get to see more of the like background of the world, and I kind of get the feeling it's more of an overarching plot starting to unfold. So I really enjoyed it, and uh, I'm excited to keep going with it. So, definitely recommend. And that's all there is. We'll have links to our Goodreads, all the books that we mentioned, and our social media down in the doodly-doo. Give us a like, comment, subscribe, and we hope to see you guys again soon. Bye.